All right. This is the pre-lab video uh, and pre-lab lecture for our final laboratory experiment of the semester, our uh, partitioning coefficient experiment, which will also double as a thermodynamics experiment. All right. What we are looking at is uh, we want, ultimately I want to be able to study thermodynamics. So I want to be able to do uh, some temperature dependence and, and I want an equilibrium constant in there because we know that the equilibrium constant of a reaction is related to the change in free energy of that. So it's a matter of what kind of equilibrium constants can we study. Well, we did the acid base indicator earlier this uh, semester. We could use that as our equilibrium constant if we wanted to. But we're going to do a different one that introduces us to a, another topic that I have been interested in for a long time, which is the idea of partitioning. So today, we're going to have a, a bunch of systems that essentially have two liquids that don't mix with each other, that are immiscible. All right, water and methylene chloride. And the methylene chloride is more dense, so unlike what you're used to seeing when you mix up salad dressing and the water layer settles to the bottom, or the vinegar water layer settles to the bottom, and the oil floats to the top, here the water floats to the top because it's less dense. And when we add iodine, I2, into this system, it will partition, divide, itself into both layers. And so there's an equilibrium constant. So you can think of this as a reaction. I2 starting in water moving to the methylene chloride. If you think of this as a reaction, the equilibrium constant for this reaction would have the concentration of iodine in the methylene chloride layer divided by the concentration of iodine in the water layer. Products over reactants. No coefficients, everything's a one, so it's super easy. We call this type of equilibrium constant KD for distribution. How is the solute, iodine, distributed? But it's still an equilibrium constant, just like Ka's, just like Kw, Ksp, yet another equilibrium constant. Right? And its, its value will vary with temperature. So that's how the thermodynamic stuff will come into play later on. But that's more in the calculation setup. Okay? So the lab is designed to reinforce some equilibrium concepts in that no matter how we start, we could start with all of our iodine in water and none in methylene chloride, or all of it in methylene chloride, none of it in water, regardless of how we start, we should always end up at the same ratio, right? Some, the right amount will move to accomplish this ratio of uh, iodine that, that this system likes to have. The only way that ratio changes is with the temperature. And so we're going to each work at a slightly different temperature uh, in, in the lab today and we'll have to pool our results as a, uh, as a class in order to be able to do the thermodynamic piece. Okay? Now I think after lab, I'll bring us back together and, and make a short video, show you how to do a few of the calculations associated with it. They are described, but uh, I'll, I'll try to help out with a couple of, of pointers there as well. Okay, so the lab itself begins with preparing a series of standards. So I'm on page 25 of the extra handout sheet uh, the, of the handouts, okay. In step one, there are two things that look a little bit confusing. So let's make sure we understand which is which. We need about 40 milliliters of what's called the stock solution. The stock solution. So this is step one. The stock is the solution that is both 0 0.02 in iodine and 0.2 molar in iodide ion, I minus ions, okay? 
That is the first column in the little table right here. So the first line corresponds to the first column, the volumes that you're going to use. The, uh, the other solution that we're involving is just 0.2 molar iodide ion. Okay, So this stock solution is going to be the source of our molecular iodine for this experiment that we're working with. And as you can see, you're going to make five solutions, each having a total volume of 20 milliliters, okay? By varying the amounts of these two. Your first one uses two of this, 18 of the second, then four and 16, all right? You know, and you just work your way up, okay? So these are your, this whole table, these are always going to be your water, your aqueous solutions. Then you're taking, so you're making 20 milliliters of each, each of these, okay? So in, in, in essence, you're going to have five different, you know, 20 milliliter samples of each of these. You're going to take 10 to make the partitioning. So you're going to have 10 of the water layer, and then you'll add 10 of the methylene chloride to it. So all our systems are starting with iodine in the water layer, okay, and nothing in the methylene chloride layer. But what we're starting with is a different amount. And again, that's going to prove that no matter, hopefully, no matter how much we start with, we divide ourselves by the same, into the same ratio when we're all said and done, if we're getting a consistent result, okay? Now this partitioning does not happen instantly. It takes some time. So when you mix them, you're using what's called a scintillation flask that has a lid on it so that you can shake it, okay? Um, and then you need to let it settle because when you shake it, just like salad dressing, it'll mix temporarily, okay? And then your salad dressing settles out and separates over time. So we need to allow that to happen and we need to allow the equilibrium to be fully established. So that's about 20 minutes or so that we want to let these set. While these are resting for 20 minutes and coming to their temperature as well, in your temperature baths that you'll make, okay, that's when you can start to make or record your absorbance standards. Again, we're going to use Beer's Law to make a graph of the absorbance of each of our standards that we make up here, okay? Because we've only used 10 of them. We've made 20, we've kept half, all right? So that we can do this. So you'll make a graph, right? Which should look like one of these graphs that you'll get a Y equals MX plus B. And you should be able to do this, you know, record these absorbances while the equilibriums are being achieved after you've shaken them up, okay? All right. You'll use this graph then later on. After the equilibrium is reached, you'll come in here, grab a tiny little sample of the water layer, just the water layer, okay? The methylene chloride, and we'll set it out as an example, the methylene chloride eats uh, the um, plastic cuvettes that we use with our spectrometers. All right, so that's kind of a bad outcome, right? So we need to make sure that the settling has occurred and we're just getting water. So you put the water into the cuvette that you're used to using, the little square cuvettes, and then you measure the UV vis absorbance so that you can then use the absorbance, the Y, to figure out what's the concentration in this layer here. Okay? The rest of it just falls out like dominoes. If you know you started with a 0.2 molar here and now you measure it as 0.15, where's the other 0.05? Down here in the methylene chloride layer. Okay? So then you've got the two concentrations that you need for the ratio over here simply by subtracting the one from the other. Okay, so that's in essence the calculations, all right? Now each of these will be a KEQ. So again, to sort of hint at the calculations, we'll take our KEQs and turn them into delta G, right? See, delta G is negative RTLN of KD. So we'll turn each of our 
um, equilibrium constants into a free energy and ultimately we'll be looking to make a graph. If we make a graph of delta G versus temperature, remember the other form of delta G that's useful is H minus TS. H minus TS is a Y equals MX plus B formula where T, temperature, is the X, right? Delta S will be our slope and the y-intercept will be h. So making this graph, turning equilibrium constants into free energies, graphing free energies versus the temperatures, will tell us the enthalpy and entropy changes of moving iodine from water to methylene chloride. Is it endothermic or exothermic based on the delta h sign? Is it more ordered or less ordered? based on the slope of this graph, positive delta S or negative delta S. So just by shaking up the iodine, letting it distribute itself, we get an idea of molecularly where does the iodine like to live, you know, and, and changing from one to the other, which is the preferred direction that it might like to move. So that's the sort of the overall goal. We'll get to calculate some equilibrium constants, but mainly so that we can um, get to these thermodynamic parameters of enthalpy and entropy. Okay? There's a report sheet for this experiment in the FACT data drive, the Chem 41, 147 folder in FACT data drive. Okay? Um, so you, it has uh, a bunch of data analysis that you'll do and then some questions that you'll answer okay, uh, based on that. All right, we see a note here from Mrs. Mowry. Um, step 14 of the procedure. Um, Rather than having a big separatory funnel, everything just goes into one container in our waste hood. So look for that one container uh, for the extraction systems. Okay. Um, there is a tub for collecting the uh, vials, the scintillation vials. We can wash those and they can get reused because they're glass, they're not plastic. Okay. So you'll see that available as well. Um, I have one note as well in step six on page 25 there. Um, first of all, it says while you wait, proceed with step 7 through X. That's 10. That X should be a 10. I put a placeholder in when I wrote this and then never filled in the placeholder. So you can do 7 through 10 while you wait for the equilibrium to reach. And also make a little note to yourself. While the systems are equilibrating, it's okay to shake them every now and then. You know, every four or five minutes, if you go in and shake it back up and then let it settle again, you're just going to get a more even, dis well not even distribution, you're going to help it reach equilibrium faster that way or, or be closer to the true equilibrium. Okay? So that's a little note. You can shake these a couple of times during that 20 minute window that you're, that you're waiting. Okay? So, uh, are there any questions on the procedure or goals of the experiment for the day? Okay. Um, good luck. We'll come back together for a little bit of data analysis afterwards. Okay. Thanks.